Uh, happy Groundhog Day, everybody. It's actually the day after Groundhog's Day, but today is... Your birthday! More importantly. Yeah. Happy hey, birthday my... to Bill. Over right, and over well, again. It is my birthday, <laughs> which is weird because I just had a birthday last year. But um, today it's uh, Groundhog's Day, so you're going to listen to this, which is February 3rd. Or you could be listening to it, whatever. You could be listening to this three years from now. We could all be dead. I don't know what's going on. It's a positive outlook. And again tomorrow, <laughs> and again tomorrow. You must have saw your shadow. Uh, today we're talking about time loops. Or how well, And deja vu. And deja vu. Well, what's the best way to describe this one? Ryan. Deja vu, time loops. Multiple. I mean, isn't deja vu just like the perceived, like the perception of a time loop? No. No, no it's totally different. See? Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. <laughs> well, time loop, well, see, well, that changes everything. Time, yeah. <laughs> Calm through your notes away. That's it. I'm out of here. Uh, time loops can be a lot more than that because I, one of the stories we talked about before was the uh, two women that kept thinking that they would go for a walk in the forest and then go and enter different times, time periods. You ever listened to the show before, Tom? You look confused. I don't remember that either. I think you're making that up. No, See, no, we thank you. It. Thank we you for the validation. I was Were like, we there that day? did I miss that time loop completely? Well, we talked about it. I'll talk about it again. Because yeah. I have a story, too, about an interesting time experience. Well, let's just go. So, uh, so, so time, we're talking about time loops. A lot like Groundhog's Day, the film. We do have a guest with us. Our friend Brooke is here. Say hi, Brooke. Hi, Brooke. <laughs> Thanks for taking that so literal. <laughs> and uh, I guess we'll start off. Who wants to start? Who wants to kind of talk about this one a little bit? Tanya, go. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I, are we just skipping oh, over? I'm sorry. Eat, drink, and be scary. Is yeah. The podcast you're listening to right now. And the premise <laughs> I was like, what about the whole intro? <laughs> we eat. We eat, we drink, and we talk about scary stuff. And today we're, uh, Tiny, what are we eating and drinking? Um, in honor of Bill's birthday, as well as uh, Groundhog's Day, um, we have sausage rolls, because it's Groundhog. And we also have some mushroom and thyme tarts, like puff pastry tarts, obviously, for the thyme. And then the mushrooms, because Bill is a fun guy. Wow. <laughs> You should like corn, because that's corny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now moving on. Uh, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about what, who wants to go. What number of episode is this? Do you know? And what do you want to hazard a guess? 35? I, 30 I think something. it's 35. I'll, you never ask a podcast its age. Come on. <laughs> oh, I break all the rules. <laughs> you do. All right, Evil who wants Tom. to start this one? Who's starting this one? Tanya. Um, someone else start. I want to look for something. You brought up something right for the show that I want to try to find. So someone else uh, start. Yeah. We talked about Good. it before. We're talking about okay, it. Okay, so notes. I want to know why you guys think that deja vu isn't just a perception of time loop. Like, to me, that would be the perceiving of a time loop. So coming up from the outside, I just want you to tell me what is a time loop. So, so I guess the definition of a time loop would be... Groundhog's Day. Living day. over... Yeah, Groundhog's Day. So when you're living over and over the same elapsed time that's gone... That you've lived through before, I guess, where you, and you, inexplicably you would wake up or blink or whatever, and you have to start the same period of time over with the same things resulting, essentially as a time loop. Yeah, like the concept of every movie where you you fall asleep and you wake up and it's still Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. It's just the same iteration where whatever sequence of time you're going through, it always starts over at a perceived frozen point. While... Deja vu, from a psychological standpoint, if you talk about like gestalt psychology and how uh, our brains, when they perceive information, they don't take all information at once. They take parts of information and then they kind of fill in the gaps, right? That's how our perception works. So what deja vu would be would be us perceiving things, but our brain filling in those gaps that it's used the same information to fill in gaps from a earlier standpoint and it kind of makes you feel like you've experienced something again or before um, that's one theory behind deja vu that only works though if you're talking about things that exist in that person's mind you know what i mean like well, it's also called you they would only be like on a memory right but i wouldn't be perceiving your deja vu right well even for that person i mean like say if your deja vu is thinking that you're going to be almost premonition like does that make right, sense exactly you, you can't be making things up in your mind, that falls under hallucination, not gestalt well, psychology. Well, it's not a hallucination on the sense that you think you're perceiving it in real time. What happens is, like, let's say you walk into a room and your dog runs by the door, right? And then five minutes later, you go to walk out the room and your dog runs by the door again, right? Mm -hmm. 
the concept is same thing happened and you're perceiving it in two different times, but because it happened in the same manner, your brain thinks it's a similar event. Right. So I actually was reading about that because uh, I thought that we would go down the line of time loops versus premonition versus right. deja vu. And I thought that what's interesting is like medically when they come across these people who think that they're suffering from really bad debilitating cases of what they would think of as deja vu right what they tend to get diagnosed with is like frontal frontal lobe problems and right. damage to that frontal lobe so they they tend to think what happens is these things happen in real time but you don't your perception of them is wrong so they may have already happened to you but the way your brain is perceiving them is like it hasn't happened yet or you've already seen it happen and then you think you see it happen so it's Everything's happening in real time. It's your perception that's screwing it up and causing the deja vu. So that's the medical baseline for why deja vu happens. Right, and I can see that from like an injury standpoint, right? But if you don't have any frontal lobe damage and you're just experiencing things in real time, you can't expect it to be a fallacy of perception all the time, right? Mm. Every time I've experienced deja vu, it has never been like a premonition, like I've seen this before. It's been more like... I don't know. Almost like a crossing of reality to I can't. I, I'm halfway out of this plane, halfway in this plane, and I can't make my brain work in it anymore. Do so you, you like it? I, you know, it's really disorienting. Once or twice I've had it. It almost made me throw up when I was younger. It used to hit me kind of hard. It hasn't really for a while. But did you have a vertigo type effect? Yeah, it, I guess vertigo would almost be a great way to put it. Like a sudden intense vertigo feeling for maybe ten or fifteen seconds, and then kind of a layover of a couple minutes for me to like shake it off it yeah, was weird i love that feeling you do, I bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's why i drink she, yeah microdoses deja vu i time. microdose deja vu <laughs> yeah so those are called flashbacks yeah when i have deja vu it's almost like the feeling that i get is more familiar it's like the the concept of all right i've i understand this is happening, but why is it happening again? Mm. It's like in a, a high level of awareness that I have. And it's only for whatever is happening, right? It's not like I, I don't get dizzy. I don't get... Go ahead. I think it sounds like a different thing than what we were talking about. Yeah, right. it's like an increased static and an increased, for me, and an increased clarity for you. Right, it's crazy clarity. It's like I can almost tell you what's going to happen if it keeps happening. Hmm. So... Maybe. Who's going to win the Super Bowl? It's not the Chiefs. <laughs> I think it's Eminem, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. So the Bungles, man. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's who I'm going for is the Bungles. So what do you think? That Where's the line between premonition, do you think, and time loops? Like, uh, Well, a time loop would be something that brings you back to the past so you relieve to the present. Right? right. While a premonition is something that happens in the future, essentially, if we ever can quantify that right you can't have a premonition and a time loop in my opinion because time loop goes from a to b to c and then back to a to b to c while your premonition would be like d e f right Mm -hmm. now what's interesting though is while you're reliving the same section a b c right your counterparts everyone else is in this environment with you who's not aware of your time loop you could perceive that as a premonition for them so, to me, it'd be, like, a difference in perception, right? Like, let's say that we are talking about the Super Bowl, right? And let's say that I relive the loss of the Chiefs over and over and over again, right? And then you haven't seen that yet, so I can tell you how that game's going to go straight to hell, right? And to me, I know what's happening, but you don't because you haven't experienced it yet. So, I wonder if time loops, premonitions, deja vu are all just correlations of perception that's really funny because i have something to say about that later i think i'm gonna let anybody else talk but well, like... i have a question about the if you're in a time loop and then everyone else like does that mean everyone could potentially have their own independent timeline see that's kind of digging well, into it is and it... that's where the multiverse and the multi-theory comes into right play. so at that point you have to open it up to multi-dimensions or stuff because otherwise why are you being put into this time loop and why is everybody else a pawn in your time loop does that make sense are you now the star of your own show and everybody else is just ancillary characters or is everyone like in weird time purgatory while you're doing well, your there's, journey or <laughs> there's one way that you look at this also and if you want to look at like alan watts who has a lot of 
ideas and thoughts. And one of them is, there's two variations of this, and one is everyone is the same person. Solipsism? Where everybody, so everything is a constant loop. So at one time in my life. Oh, yeah, you just Brooke, blew my you. mind. I'm feeling it. <laughs> and I could get down with life, this. <laughs> I was you. And next time, I'm Hitler. And the time after that, I'm a little old lady in 1870 doing laundry. And it's this thing that goes over and over. Everyone is the same person. It does go beyond that where he also says everyone is God. And we are all each other and everyone is God. Now, Wouldn't because it? of that, if you look at that being a time loop, and we're occasionally, we're pieces, we're going to connect with ourselves on bits and pieces. If this is true, I'm not saying this is my theory. There's going to be bits and pieces, and that's where you're going to start filling these loops. I felt like I lived this before because I did. Because I was you once, Ryan. Oh, yeah, you're I'm welcome. hot for and this now theory. <laughs> I'm back. And now I'm next to you again, but I was already you once. I haven't been you yet, Tom, because that, that, that line in my life has not happened. But it's this constant. You haven't hit rock loop. bottom, then. It's, <laughs> Ryan was me, no, and that's, he so, was the so evil Tom. Imagine this wire wrapped around a rod just like and it just it goes around trillions of times and occasionally those wires came really close and they can kind of touch you can also look at this another way a really old camera and when you have to advance the film and sometimes you don't advance it enough and two pictures overlap and they touch time if you look at it linear then that means nothing but if time is moments in time and they all just kind of inter intertwine. Occasionally, it's that it's that roll of film that didn't get advanced enough, and two pieces touch, and that's when you have these moments, these premonitions, uh, these premonitions, and you're having this deja vu because two moments in time have touched. You're like, well, I already lived that one moment in time, and now I'm living this other one, but they kind of they kind of crossed. Now again, these are these are theories. They're not my theory, but they uh, seem cool. I, before I, we go in any farther, I want to. Wouldn't it make more sense that instead of there's one intelligence that jumps from person to person that we're all connected to a hive mind where well, that, your thoughts and my thoughts and Tom's thoughts and everyone else's thoughts are just a subsequent line. You don't want of, my thoughts. No. Uh, one consciousness? Are <laughs> yeah. you saying, would that then just be one person? No, no, no. Be not one way. consciousness. It's just that we're all tapped into a higher stream of consciousness that we so, all tap into. What was kind of interesting, I heard somebody provide a theory that was essentially that our life has already been laid out for us in the way that a, like a CD is laid out. Everything's already on there with the content and we are the players. Like all we are is the media player to that life. And those lives can be cycled through for whatever. It's almost a Buddhist look like you need this in your life. Reincarnation. We're, we're going to give you life A instead of life B and life C, which you've already had. You can play life A and go through that with all of its experiences. I, it, I think about people like in a movie or in a book that as soon as they get it, they go to the very end just to see how it ends. If you could do that in your own life, if you could just loop forward and then loop back. I'm going to see how my life ends. Would you do it? Would you know? I asked a psychic, not exactly that question, but a question about someone close to me dying. And he wouldn't answer me. He said sometimes it's best not to know. I think he didn't That's know. A cop out. That is oh, my thought. gosh. A psychic didn't know something? <gasps> what? Ask him if he saw this and then punch him in the nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not that he didn't know it. He chose not to answer. It, it's oh, like yeah. my grandpa, one of my grandfather's chose favorite jokes. You. He's a, he goes, a man goes to see a psychic, and he knocks on the psychic's door. And the psychic yells out, who's there? And the man left. <laughs> <laughs> so as for your overlapping film idea, how would you perceive time then? I know most people consider it to be linear. So that's a thing. I, but I'm saying it's not linear. So my thing is it wouldn't be. Like the thought of – listen, I'm not a time doctor, Okay. I don't know how this stuff works. That sounds I like can't, an awesome show. I can't. Time doctor. It's, time called, doctor. it's called Doctor Who. What? <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. Okay. But but I, uh, I, I mean, the thought of it just going on, and it's this fuse that you light, and it's just burning. And every day we're just on that burning fuse, and it goes in that order. That's great, but I can't explain it. See, I also don't know how sausage is made. If you go, so, like these are things like I can't explain, but I still enjoy it. I think time sausage and time. If you go with the whole like life is a video and we're just the player of it, time's irrelevant at that point. Time's a construct we make in our life to be able to like you pause the video and say, oh, I'm halfway through the 140 minutes. You know what I mean? It's already there where we're going to get older, we're going to age. Well, you can still die. rewind and fast forward in that. Concept sure, too. at that point, right? We just don't have that power. We have the power to play it straight through. So 
I kind of see time as a synapse. If you imagine the synapses in the brain and how they're all interconnected and overwoven. And the concept is as we create constructs for our lives, as the sun goes up, sun goes down, you know, as our birthdays happen, we're constantly moving forward in these electrical synapses of time. However, if we could find a way through either meditation or, you know, psilocybin or anything else where we can see the direction that we're moving and go back into different synapses, we could essentially travel back in time. The only concept is we couldn't travel any farther than we've already experienced because we have no foundation for that yet, right? Does that make sense? So as seen as a synapse or a woven fabric, right, we're constantly moving in progression and we have the ability to go left, right, or backwards as long as we have the tool to allow us to do it, kind of like your media player. So. I have an idea that builds right into that. So I thought that it's an interesting thought to me that it's possible that time loops are just our perception of actual time in our subconscious. Anytime we're not like actually making the thought process to control our life. Well, you're not doing that outside meta thinking of what is my life right now? What could I be doing to be bettering my life? You're literally going on autopilot. And how many people can't look back at the last year and think, well, there's like days of my life I don't even remember and I wasted. So how is that not a time loop? When I mean, that's the movie trope of a time loop is you wake up and do the same goddamn thing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You just call them all Monday. It's the concept of relativity when it comes to time. Like, for example, like if you're at – if you and I are out doing something and you're really enjoying your time, like – one hour may feel like two minutes. Well, and that's what I'm saying. It's only the times where you engage yourself, where actually you're making anything outside of a time loop. Does that make sense? Right. Those are the only real moments in your life. Everything outside of your perceptive, like, I'm going to actually apply myself to this is just, I don't know, a wash. You're making me feel super depressed. Yeah, it's a nihilist <laughs> look, but it honestly, is. it kind of is a nihilist look. Anytime you look at time loops, look at all the time loop movies. Unless they're specifically based around love, they're all pretty nihilistic. Well, that goes it goes into the concept of lost time as well, right? I would see that more as lost time than a time loop because a time loop allows you to relive the same iteration over and over again while... Lost time is like you're driving down the road and you get hypnotized by the snow and the next thing you know, you're three hours away. So lost time, my favorite example of that would be the movie Memento. Oh, I love where, Memento, Where like, yeah. nothing's actually changed and for the rest of people it's going on, but for him, he's just living it over and over again. Does that make sense? It's new for him. Well, he's also got the frontal lobe damage that we talked That's about. That's the frontal with. lobe damage, yeah. exactly. So I don't know. That's an interesting thought, I guess. I mean... So I want to I talk about time travel a little bit because I've always thought... I, I believe time travel probably is possible. I believe that people probably could move back and forth through time. But I want to look at it like I'm watching train spotting on VHS. And when I stick that in and I start watching it, I watch it and time's going normal. And then I get to the dead baby part, and I don't want to see that. So I fast forward it. Nobody in the movie knows I'm fast forwarding it. It just goes really fast. And to them, it's just going normal. And then it stops, and the movie keeps playing. And then the movie ends. And nobody in that movie... Knew that I fast forwarded it. Nobody Ooh. knew I rewound it. And then when I want to watch it again, I just watch it again and stick it in. I think that's how time travel would work. I think if there was time travel, nobody, right now we don't know. Time, time travel could be moving at a, at a, uh, like a wave. And sometimes it goes really fast and sometimes it goes really slow. But because we're just on it. Because we have no reference well, it's like space. Making a, uh, it's like fast forwarding a video. As far as they know, it just works. Well, he was normal. talking about time being linear as in a line and you were – one of you was talking about it being a fabric, so many um, strings woven together. And then I was like, yeah, and then what if somebody took that and shook it like a picnic blanket? And then you got what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of you have seen The Good Place, but in the afterlife, the timeline is what they refer to as Jeremy Bear Me, which instead of it being linear, it looks like someone in cursive wrote Jeremy Bear Me, and that's how the timeline flows. It overlaps and it crosses over and it goes back and it goes forward and it's kind of just a weird hodgepodge of like the signature of god kind of okay so here's a good question though timelines and like this is the big (laughs) sorry we have our studio dog 
thing under here. She's in one of the microphones. Wants right? to be part of the conversation. <laughs> Would you have something about to say about time loops? Let's hear it. <laughs> I mean, because time loops and and uh, uh, time machines, they all work on the same premise that they start somewhere the first second they were turned on. Does that make sense? You can't go back any farther than that. You can't go forward any farther than what you have it turned on. So is it the classic like quantum leap thing where you can only travel within your lifetime? Well, he does. He, only gets, he goes. He no, goes, he goes well, beyond. Yes, but only because it's like because they're related to him. The end of that. Is it like oh, yeah. only owning one of the Harry Potter films, and you can only watch that one? And you know you God, can't watch not. beyond that because you don't own the other ones. That's like you. You're the one Harry Potter film that you like. The I don't know any of. Them. I'm going to say what's the Goblet of Hats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. I can't think of one of the names, but that would be kind of it. Like I, think I only it. own that one, and I can't watch the other one. So that'd be you. I can only live. I can only watch my life because I don't have the other lives on DVD. The extended, I didn't get the box set. I only right. bought the one. That's too bad. But does that mean that we have access to the box set, or is that just something that we? Sorry, I got distracted. So, does that mean we just don't have the box set, or does that just mean that we have no concept for the other movies? Does that make sense? Well, I mean, I think we have the desire. We've maybe heard about them. Somebody told us about it. Hey, there's another life. Abraham Lincoln, what? I'd like to go back then. You weren't alive then. You don't. You didn't have the box set. It's funny that you mentioned Abraham Lincoln because there was a theory about, have you ever heard the term walk-in? No. Why don't you explain that for us? A walk-in is where another soul or another entity takes over a person who for whatever reason, their soul or energy doesn't want to do it anymore. So there's a theory that Abraham Lincoln was like this conduit where he, one soul would live part of a life, and then when he didn't want to, another energy would come in, and he would essentially change his personality. And there's been lots of theories about that's what happened to him. He went from having one political belief structure to like waking up one day and being a completely different person and that whole walk-in concept is really interesting with if you go back to everyone's the same iteration right where we just thumb through whoever we want to be whenever we want to be that person it's pretty interesting who would you want to be oh god eminem at the super bowl when i win sorry did i say that out loud (laughs) when you Wait, Eminem went to this rule and won? I'm confused, too. Yeah. You guys asked who was going to win the Super Bowl. Eminem. I caught that. <laughs> okay. Earlier. Yeah, but I, still, I don't understand it. No, yeah. I didn't understand it, but I caught it. Speaking of Eminem's, why the whole concept of desexualizing the green Eminem? Like, why do we care? Well, we, don't, we don't care. Some people actually care a little too much. Oh, Jesus, it's horrible. Yeah. It's an Eminem. That's yeah. the life we live in right now. Is so honestly, just sexualize the other M&M. I, I gotta ask though. Uh, so the green M M&M and M had the theory that it uh, made people horny. What came first, the green M M&M and M as a girl, or the green M M&M and M making you horny as because, a concept? Well, <laughs> yeah. well, that was, that was, like seriously, like somebody go, all right, we need to make the M M&M and M people, and then somebody goes, hey, guess what? Uh, green M M&M and Ms they make people horny. Maybe it's so like green with envy. Make it the girl. Make it the girl, and then is that like is that? I don't know. Why is, there's a marketing or, meeting going on, and somebody's or, like, Bill, what are or, you doing with all those green M&Ms over there? Or did somebody go, hey, the green M&Ms, a girl, if you eat those, they'll make you horny. I don't know. You guys have heard that, right? Green M&Ms make you horny? Am I the only one that's heard this? Yeah. yeah. I'm the only one? Yeah. I feel like you might have just invented it. Google green M&Ms, and you're going to – well, now you'll see something else. But you'll see – if you type in green M&Ms horny, you're going to see 4,000 things about it. So I know I brought it up, but unabashedly, I want to talk about how excited I am that I found out during the research for this episode that they're actually bringing back Quantum Leap. Are they really? Squat Bacula, yeah. Dean Stock. Oh, really? It's well, going to be Stock a continuation. Down. It's been 30 years since Sam Beckett walked into this particle accelerator now. Well, by the way, that was a horrible ending to a Oh, yeah. Really it was terrible. Series. It was right? terrible. But I, I love the series. The ending. Uh, well, essentially, it turns out that everybody was dead the whole time. Yeah. So... Sorry, spoiler See, alert! Even, spoiler alert for like a thirty-year-old show. <laughs> Does that still count? Well, you we, know, it's yeah. funny. Like the I did just shows. find an article um, that said, "Do you remember when people thought green M and M's made you horny?" And that Bill does. it was rumored Pepperidge Farm that does. green M and M's were essentially the equivalent of candy Viagra. What? 
That was a big rumor. And Bill's Van, over there, handful of them. Van Halen <laughs> yeah. famously fueled the rumors by requesting that bowls of green M&Ms be present in their dressing room. Yes. Who? See? Van Halen. Nice. Why? You know what? Actually, I Is know about that. coloring? So Van Halen actually asked for green M&Ms just so they could see that people were actually reading their contracts. And they knew if they went there and there was all these M&Ms and colors, they probably didn't read any of their contract. And the sound settings were not going to be the right way that they wanted them because they didn't, they didn't hey, read it. Hey, just because I didn't read your whole contract doesn't mean I doesn't didn't read mean, the important yeah, I could have half-assed that, man. Give me some credit. Or what if they only read the M&M part? That's right. fucking funny. Hey, we couldn't do your sound. We were too busy uh, picking green M&Ms. Out of all the M and M's, I've got now plans. Your music sounds like shit. <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. All right, back to time loop. Uh, by the way, I, did, I watched the end of uh, Quantum Leap, and you got more out of it than I did because I don't. You, I didn't even get that end. You didn't get that. He that's the whole a, idea. He, he died bar. the second he walked into the particle yeah. accelerator, and that's why he can only time travel within his life. He's only fixing things either within his own lifespan or his family. Yeah, I don't know. Because he goes into a bar, and like, Al's dead the there. whole time. Yeah, Al died like from a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So I've heard of a lot of people experiencing deja vu, but I've never talked to anyone that experienced a time loop. Is that so, something I just haven't been paying attention to? Something that I guess I've been trying to figure out is a there's time loop and time travel things where a guy's with his wife and she stops into a, a bookshop and he's like, oh, I'm going to go run down to this store down the street, runs down there. And is suddenly in a weird another time, goes back to the store to find his wife, and it's not this. It's now a women's clothing store, and it's not the bookstore. But as soon as he walks through the doors, it turns into the bookstore, and he's back in his own timeline. So is that time travel, or like I'm assuming that would be time travel? That because almost sounds like a multi-dimensional rift. Yeah, me. that's what I would almost think. That's like an Outlander yeah. type of thing. Where you've got... I thought Outlander was time travel. Well, she gets sent back, but you get the impression the that it's supposed to be our world then, but it doesn't say specifically it's our world then. They, she could have just went to a 1400s type world or dimension. Okay. See, I can see that as... I would almost see that as time travel through like the stones, right? Mm-hmm. What I see as a time rift or a multidimensional rift or whatever you want to call it is you've got the fabric of these two places over like interwoven, right? And as you walk through one, you pass through both. And then when you realize it's different and you come back through whatever portal, whatever rift or thinning of the veil, essentially, you come back to where the other side of the door, essentially, right? Now, what would be interesting is if someone else did the same thing on the opposite side, right? See, I still think that's, to me, I think there needs to be important uh, distinction between time travel and time loops being that time travel is something you participate in and time loops are almost something you're subject to. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. One is an iteration where something repeats continuously until it doesn't anymore. While time travel is going specifically to a different location or space and time. Like, uh, so I, here we go. I'm going to talk about something that just kind of crossed my mind when we were talking about this. It's a conversation that we've had before about quartz. We say that quartz can record. Yeah. Now, audio? Yeah. And visual. Visual. Okay. So there we go. Audio and visual. Why would it have to stop there? What if they can actually record time and moments? And emotion. And everything. It can almost uh, capture someone's soul. Well, and it can play that back through that's time. That's why you brought her courts today. Is that what's no. going on? <laughs> so he recorded a lot of No, he just knows it. I like rocks. <laughs> but, uh, but imagine that. Like if time, Now it's just it's not rock. It's things can be recorded and played back. And right, but that's, that's from a oscillation point of view that ref- like records like a camera. Right? If I record you with a camera... I'm not trapping you in a time loop. But now you're saying, but now you're saying that there's a limit to what well, can be recorded through man. I can only record a camera that can re- only visually record you and play it back anytime, and it doesn't affect you when I play it back. But we don't understand how courts. So then you get into that. a time echo chamber trapped in a stone. It could I'm be that. right there with you. So what if it's that? What if we're only recordings of ourselves? So you're thinking more time, of like the simulation theory. Back over and over. So what if you're like, 
I've, I swear to God, this has happened before. You want to know why? We're not really ourselves. We're recording of ourselves, and we're playing back over and over because that's one exactly time, what I was saying. Except yeah. for yeah, it's it's but it's, we're it's not existing, ourselves. and you're playing. We're just copies. Well, right. it just could be the multi-universe when you talk about stuff like that. Life goes on living, and now these people are stuck in these recorded over and over and over, and it's playing nonstop. It's if like they the defrag real on the our... computer of the universe. We are also okay. Screwed. So here's how I look at this. So you got two different directions. One is a theory for ghosts, right? The whole concept of we're recording energy from another place or another time, and for whatever reason, we're replaying them over and over again, and we see these things as ghosts. The other thing that would be is the simulation theory, where we're all just a brain in a tube, you know, on some other planet, right? The Matrix? Essentially, okay. yeah. Right. That's the whole concept for I feel like what you're talking about. Um, do I feel that's... The way it is, no, I I really don't feel like we have credence for the simulation theory. I know a lot of people say that any technology that goes beyond the point of recognition can essentially be like a virtual reality, right? But to me, that doesn't pertain to like the ghost in the machine, right? The chaos that your actions that I don't know what they are, how they could benefit the system and, as a whole. So... I don't really believe in the the simulation theory, but maybe that's because I'm part of the simulation, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's a simulation just because a simulation would have a better thought out ending than this. And I feel like not necessarily. Yeah. I feel like as a society, we're moving so fast. Like it it brings up. <clears throat> so lately, there have been tons and tons of movies and TV shows that have the premise of time loops, and I think that we're visiting that so much because the idea that like life is starting to move really fast and it gets to the point now where we look back and i think maybe our my grandparents had enough time to make all the important life decisions in their life that actually affected them but i really don't like sometimes they just come and go i don't get to make that decision and so it's really i think a common thing to look back and just feel like you are you know under equipped with time to make all the decisions, to do all the things you want to do in your life, and to make those effects. So the it's physical natural. Physical limitations. It's natural to just imagine what would be the best thing if I could stop and make the best day, the best well, moment. If I could that's try because, and hash out every iteration. Well, yeah, exactly. Because everyone has something they wish they could do, right? Hindsight's twenty twenty, mm-hmm. right? And time is the only thing that we, t- right now, can't get back, right? So it has this feeling of hope and redemption and nostalgia to it. That's why people are interested in it. But the whole concept of even if you can go back and change time, are you actually changing anything? Like the whole concept of like the grandfather paradox where you go back in time and you accidentally kill your grandfather before you were born, right? So now you can't go back in time and your grandfather's alive, Right, so now you're stuck in this loop where you become your own grandfather. Futurama covered that problem exactly, <laughs> yeah, right? But the point that I'm trying to make here is: is time is time a an iteration for every person, or is time just something that we all attach ourselves to for relativity's I th- sake? I think honestly, time's a construct, man. It's just something we make because we feel like there's something to be measured there and we're all going to go crazy if we don't. Because how are we going to you know, measure our, or quantify any of our achievements if we don't put time to it? And I mean, I, it's just something we have to do as people. The rest of the world, like all of the rest of the animal kingdom doesn't give a shit. You know, I mean, yeah, day and night. they grow old and die. They grow old they and die, but I not. don't think they get anxiety about growing old and dying. The same that we... we but our we perception do. of of time for an animal is how we see that time. So if you look at it, imagine this, imagine that life is this huge piece of data and it's being jammed into a computer, but the computer needs an operating system. And that's what we are. And we are written in a way to perceive all that data. So we're written in a way. We don't know how fast time goes. We don't know how fast anything goes. It's just like when you first start playing a video game on novice and the game is really slow and you're doing, but it's hard and you get better and better, and better at it. And towards the end, you could play at the fastest level and buzz, all the way through that thing. Now, we're an operating system for time and and energy and everything else. We perceive it as linear. I don't 100% know if that's the case, but we see it that way. As far as we know, 
time could be going any direction of the world. It could be going up and down or left and right, whatever we're doing. But we're perceiving it because that's the easiest way. Our little brains can only perceive things so fast. One way. Well, that's so, the whole fourth dimensional construct, right? We live in a three-dimensional world, so we can perceive everything from a third-dimensional perspective down. We can't understand a fourth dimension because that would allow us to essentially see time as a movie, like what you talked about, where we could go backwards, we can go forwards, we can pause it. Um, and since we are not that fourth dimensional beings, we can't do that, right? Before uh, we finish, I want to tell a story about, um, there was four of us, we were investigating an old uh, nursing home back where I'm from, and we had broken up into two groups. And one of the two people, or excuse me, the one of the groups, the two people, went into this room and... I, it may be two minutes, me and another guy walked in behind him, and they weren't in the room. There was no way to get out of that room um, because there was only that one door into this hospital room. We were yelling for him. We were screaming for him. Like, we called him. Our phones wouldn't dial out. Um, we left the room, and then maybe two minutes later, they walked out of the room. And they had no recollection for us going in there. Our time was they were gone for about 10 minutes, and their time was they had walked in the room, looked around, and came back out. It's the only time I've ever had that kind of experience. And it wasn't like they went in the room and hid, and they were just fucking with us because it was an empty room. It was a doorway, empty room, and then back out. See, I feel like that's a dimensional thing too, though. So did I. I don't. I feel like that's less time loops. No, but I, what I'm talking about, the reason why I think that's interesting is because their frame of time was two minutes. Oh, gotcha. Our frame of time was ten. So almost like an alien abduction at that point. Lost time. It was lost time, yeah. There was a really great uh, Twilight Zone episode where every second of time was being built by a team, a construction team. But only moments of time, only moments were being built where somebody was going to be there, places. And a guy accidentally turned down an alley, and there was, the alley was gone. And he got sucked into this world, and they go, listen, there's a group of construction workers, and they build every minute of time. But they're not perfect. Sometimes they forget to put your keys somewhere. Sometimes they forget to do this. Sometimes people get lost, and they come back. And it was kind of, I was, it's one of those things you see as a kid, but it kind of resonated with you. Because like, hmm. oh, that was really cool. But I'm not saying this is the cause, but it kind of is like that. We've all been there. We're like, I swear to God, that wasn't there two minutes ago. Oh, absolutely. Well, and that's another question I had, which is kind of a, a head-turning one. Uh, turns this all upside down is, are time loops a necessary thing? Do you think that we get that, like, the idea that they're happening because it's a check? Like, it's a it's a constant check about our society and about it, how we think. It's Like a save point in a game? Yeah. Like, a time loop is, it's, a, it's the reason we keep remaking every goddamn piece of media we have. Because we live in the past. We've got to keep validating what the people in the past think and checking on it with the people who are coming into it and saying, is this right? Like, we have to keep replaying this stuff to ourselves or else we don't know who we are. Do you think they're a necessary thing? And that's why we talk about time loops, because we're constantly checking with ourselves. Well, we're also afraid of the future, and we want to, we, we've been through the past, and that's our safe zone. So everybody goes, if I could, it's like Cher says, if I could turn back a time, like if she could go, but she never sings a song like, hey, man, I wish I could go 10 years ahead. Nobody wants to do that. Everybody wants to go back in time. Because people, it's scary. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's and like, yesterday was safe. So, so the idea, it's time scares us. And that's why it probably needs to be in a linear format. It needs to be in a thing because nobody wants to jump 30 years ahead. Because you want to be able to put stuff Everybody behind you. Everybody wants to jump 24 hours ahead Yeah. in 24-hour increments. Well, let me ask you this. If you were able to jump forward in time, would it be relative or if I jump ahead 10 years in time, I'm still me, but you guys are 10 years older, right? Well, that's not cool. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, if we would drive in our spaceship, you know, 99.9% the speed of light for 100 is that years. Gas powered? Yeah, it is. It's <laughs> solar <hybrid>. powered. Yeah. <laughs> if we would do that for, let's say, 100 years, I would be 10 years older. You guys would be 1,000 years older, right? There'd be a difference in time because of the speed that you were driving. And that's scientifically proven yeah, it's, it's a one theory of those relativity. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah but i'm saying so now if we're saying uh you can go 10 years ahead and we're going to age 10 years and you're not but that's going that says that you can go beyond your time because if that's the case you just added 10 years onto your life or in reality you're going to live to be 90 
all right? And then you just go ahead to where you would be 89 years old and 300 days. And then you, and you go, go back. there, and yeah. you go there, and you're like, "Hey, look at this!" But then you just drop dead because you, because in reality, ninety you forgot you to carry the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but th- that's just it. Like if you go beyond, you could only travel in your lifetime. But you don't. Who said? Well, we had that conversation. I said if oh. in your world is that in your world of time travel is that the case or because if that's the case, you never age. I think that once you're freed from the real, it no longer affects you. Yeah, but that, at, at the same time, it's your timeline. You're still aging. Not necessarily. No, if, well, if, you, be. if you become absent from time itself, you no, no, have no, no concept. No, no, no. What I'm saying time. is, if you, if it's ten o'clock in the morning, yep. and you travel fifty years, and now it's eleven o'clock, you still age that hour, even though you went all that time in the future. You're still going to age. Okay, but what if you don't freeze? Yeah. Okay. So what about this then? You travel, you you age ten minutes or an hour, or whatever, and then you come back at the same speed. Do you lose that time? No, no. Your real time. Your real time. You're traveling Technically, real time. you would lose See, that time. See, it's because Bill's still on the linear timeline, and so he's only folding it, whereas you are reversing it. It'd be like you, I'm going to make another movie reference. It's like you watching a movie that takes place over a thousand-year period. You age the 90 minutes it took you to watch that, even though everybody you watched, they said how it Right, works. but she's right. You're talking about a progression of time being cumulative. One plus one is two. And where I'm talking about... Time is one, plus one is two, minus one, minus one is zero. But your clock is your watch. You are in a watch in your on your hand. That's time the thing. You're st- you're still trying to see time as linear on a watch, right. right? If time is like what she mentioned, a, a, a signature, right? Once you start to go back in time, you could essentially start before you left, right? Yeah. Well, listen. I'm not saying what I, I'm throwing ideas out. I don't, I don't. I'm not saying anything that I'm saying is it. No, I'm just open it. for interpretation. Oh, that's it. Are you sufficiently confused yet? <laughs> I am. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think we answered any questions. I guess we did. Answer I don't know. Well, I think what you theories. are is Back to the Future. You're Benjamin Button and you're Groundhogs a day. So. That's probably true. You know what? I love that you brought it up because this is a great ending. Like I don't, and at risk of sounding like an after school special, like <laughs> don't, don't do drugs. The, the great thing about Groundhog's Day is he repeats the same day over and over again, and largely, like the philosophical part of that, what's what it's turned into is the the whole time he was living for himself and trying to get himself out of it, he failed. And the, and the second he realized that he couldn't make the difference, and he needs to just realize he needs to focus on living and how he's living, he succeeds. So what I really want people to take away from our big time loop conversation is we can theorize and talk about how it would be nice to go back or forward in time and create like this perfect scenario, but we often just do nothing about the moment we're living in, which is the actual only moment we have any control over and the moments that will dictate everything that comes in the future. Like we can look back at a week ago and say, man, I wish I would have done that differently and I wish I could go back and do it a hundred times, but you're not doing shit right now. Except for listening to this, so thank you. But you know, <laughs> but now think about the time. Let's just say if you said, "Man, if I wish I could go, uh, gone back and change that." Think about the good times in your life, the good things you did. Maybe you tried that fifteen other times and failed, and said, "God, I wish I could do that again." And then you did. This was the safe point. You I erased those know. other think, ones. Think about the best thing you ever did in your entire life. Now think about what if the first time you did it was the worst, but you actually managed somehow to control time and go back and do it again. If I had one more chance. Tom, I'm giving you one more chance. And then you go back and you do it again. You're like, oh, it's a little bit better. I'm like, okay, Tom, one more chance. It's like 15. like, come on, Tom, get it right this just time. Just one more, one more, just you, one more time. The perfect sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> ended up buying Velcro shoes because fuck tying that knot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My favorite part of Groundhog's Day is when he steps in front of that bus and he goes, like, he's <laughs> flashing his hands at the lights. That's so funny. My favorite part of the movie. All right. Well, I, I think we're, we're coming to, does anybody have anything they want to add on this? Does anybody have any? Thought, other thoughts or, infor- or or stories or anything that they want to kind of cover before we we go out. Ta- All right, well, Tanya, what? do you want to be Bill and Ted's excellent adventure with me? Yes. Okay. I'll cool. Do that with I you. said that's the one I wanted. <laughs> you already have Benjamin Button. Well, I got to be Genghis <laughs> Khan. <laughs> Genghis Khan. That means we're probably related. <laughs> How does Evil Tom travel in time? However he likes. That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, so listen. That was uh, thanks for listening to our podcast on. Uh, time looping. Um, happy birthday. Yeah, oh, thank you. that's right. It was my birthday. Uh, yeah. So hopefully you get to live it over like a thousand times. I do. We all love you every year. 
Um, <laughs> so listen, head to our website, eatdrinkandbescary.com, and there's a little contact form in there. Fill that in. Tell us some stuff that you guys want us to talk about. If you have stories or thoughts like that, uh, all our, our episodes, our experiences. How terrible we are. Yeah. Or how great it. we are. We're pretty great. Yeah, on a scale so. of 1 to like 10, how op- evil Tom is. Yeah. Optimist on that side and a pessimist <laughs> on that side. Yeah. Well, normally I just tear things apart, but today I was like throwing some stuff in. I really I liked your photo theory. Yeah, uh, I, over that was cool. overlapping those photos because that's really neat. Um, if you've ever developed film, which I just recently have, and you've seen photos overlap, I just like that because you know every picture you've taken of yourself was when you were younger. Well, it's just double exposures, right? and yeah. you took those pictures at different times, and now now live in the same moment of time. That's so, kind of uh, real quick, we uh, Tanya had a camera that she uh, took some pictures, half a roll of, and then put it away. And then we, you, you pulled it out almost a decade later, mm-hmm. took some more pictures, and it had a decade gap of photos, developed the photos, and, and there they were. So, that was just kind of cool. That is neat. That is cool. It is neat, yeah. Uh, join us next week. We're actually going to post a little bit early, Valentine's Day, uh, um, instead of Wednesday. It's so uh, for a Sorry, very, everyone. Evil Tom's not saying Very that. special episode of How to Date a Ghost. It's called Spectrophilia. <laughs> yeah. Spectrophilia. Mm. <laughs> How's that work? Like, under the, can you go under the sheet, above the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like over over the like boobies. Ha ha, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boobies. I got the third base, and then I got lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the ghost in the typical sheet walks in, and you hit it with a black light, and you see all the stains on the oh, <laughs> That's a good spot, Dan. Um, so <laughs> ectoplasmed right now. Mm. Okay, get your black lights for next week. Gross, gross. All right. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And man, head to that website. Fill that in. Uh, you know, follow us. Do all that great stuff. Hey, Brooke, thanks for being on the show. Hey, yeah, that was wonderful. Uh, come out and be on the show next week too, because we're going to be dating. To. And I think you've dated once or twice in your life. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, all right, uh, everybody. Say, Brooke, say good night. Good night. You didn't, oh, say good night, Brooke. Good night, Brooke. All right, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>